So this is my honest in-depth comparison with the Action 4 and the new GoPro Hero 12. Which is the better camera and which one should you get? The Action 4 at $399 or the GoPro Hero 12 at $399 as well. Let's start with an audio test. So this is an audio test with the GoPro Hero 12 and the Action 4. The Action 4 has the ultra wide field of view and the GoPro Hero 12 has the hyper. This is the audio coming directly from these cameras, which sounds better. Is it the GoPro Hero 12 or is it the Action 4? Now, as of an audio comparison between these two cameras, the Action 4 sounds a little bit more crisp to my ears. The GoPro Hero 12 still has that hint of bubble sound. Even though it sounds good, I would give the point to the Action 4. Now, there is one thing the Action 4 can't do, which the GoPro Hero 12 can do. And that is to connect something like AirPods and control the camera using AirPods by voice commands. Now, as of the Bluetooth and wireless audio, the Action 4 can do the exact same thing, but it will require an external microphone like the DJI mic system, which is an additional cost, but in my opinion, this is worth every penny. And this will also give you more flexibility in terms of when and where you can start and stop record, since it has a 200 meter range from the transmitter to the receiver. Now, if we're looking for a better audio system, System, I can highly recommend the DJI mic. There is a link and a review down in the description below if you want to check it out. Now where we find better audio, we also find better music. So I've been using Epidemic Sound for a long time now and there is a few things or actually a lot of things I like about Epidemic Sound compared to the other brands I've tried. One of which is the easy and convenient way of browsing by using the arrows on my keyboard instead of physically clicking play on each track. It might not sound like much but every small detail counts, right? So to me, this is actually huge. And over the years, I've also seen improvement after improvement based on feedback. So it's not only a place where you get awesome music and sound effects, it's also a place where you can have an impact on new features. And as of sound effects, you can now easily browse through a single page where all the sounds has been organized for you. So you don't only have to rely on searches, which is one of the latest updates added. And as you might know, I love traveling. So one of my favorite music playlists is, of course, travel. Now, my favorite track is Melody of Daylight, which I've already used too much in my videos. But the good thing is that I can actually find similar tracks to this song by just by selecting the Find Similar button. And this gives me a variety of different tracks to choose from within the same style. And I'm also working on a playlist, which I will share with you guys when that is done. So you can easily have access to all my favorite tracks on Epic sound. Now you can also test for yourself with a 30 day free trial using my link in the description below so you can upload and monetize as many videos as you want during that 30 day trial. Now let's get back to a stabilization test with the Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12. So doing a stabilization test here with the GoPro and the Action 4. This is Hyper Smooth On on the GoPro and we have a Rocksteady on the action for so this is a typical you know type of scenario where you do a hike and you have to have some stabilization on to make it look smoother but we also have a few options to turn this stabilization higher to become better so we have the auto boost on the gopro 12 and we have rocksteady plus and we have horizon level and horizon balance and so on on the action 4. So now we have the Rocksteady Plus on the action 4 and you can probably see that it cropped in a little bit more. And on the GoPro Hero 12 we have auto boost on. Here we have the horizon balance on the action 4. So if I tilt the camera from side to side here it should remain level. So the action 4 has a horizon level up to 45 degrees which the GoPro only has a horizon level up to 27 degrees so there's actually quite a difference there when you see that i turn the camera so there we have the gopro flipping right there but the action force still stays level so i'm still using the horizon level now on both of the cameras i have the sun directly behind me here 
So it's gonna be interesting to see how these cameras are picking up on that and if there is any details left on me or if everything is exposed to the background here. As I can see now, the Action 4 does actually pick up a little bit more of or actually balancing out the image a little bit more compared to the GoPro. At least that's what I see on the screen on both of the cameras here. Now, as of stabilization, both cameras look good to me and there's not much difference when doing normal activities. Now, both of the cameras have horizon level as well as horizon lock. So if you really want to keep that horizon level, you can swap over to horizon level at 5.3K on the GoPro and 4K on the Action 4. As for horizon lock, with the Action 4, you need to drop down to 2.7K resolution, whilst the GoPro can still shoot in 5.3K, keeping the entire horizon level no matter movement. Even though the 27 k doesn't look bad on the action 4 i do prefer the stabilization from the gopro which does a better job of keeping the footage stabilized and centered now as of slow motion both cameras can shoot 4k at 120 fps but also at 240 fps but this is where the gopro shines with its 2.7k resolution whilst on the action 4 we have to drop down to 1080p in order to get that 240 fps slow motion now looking at the quality comparison here can you guys spot the resolution difference between 2.7k and 1080p if you're watching this on a phone then it might be hard to spot the difference but if you're watching this on a bigger screen then you might be able to see the difference. I see a little bit more clarity with the GoPro as well as more details in the shadows compared to the Action 4 but crisp quality with smooth slow motion is always another big area to consider if you're looking for an action camera. But as of 4K 120 there's no significant difference. With both cameras set to auto, the normal color profile on the Action 4 and the natural color profile on the GoPro. The Osmo Action 4 has that more natural look compared to the GoPro which still looks a little bit too oversized saturated at times. Now, using an action camera in low light is becoming more and more popular, and we as consumers have high demands, and at times we expect too much from these cameras. The Action 4, in example, has a 1 over 1.3 inch steam sensor compared to the 1 over 1.9 inch on the GoPro 12, which provides a much better low light image. So, you have this low light image enhancement feature, and when you put this to auto, the camera will automatically detect and add a noise reduction to the image when you go from a bright scene to a scene with less light. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the Action 4 and the GoPro 12. The Action 4 will always be the better low-light camera because it has a better sensor where each pixel has a larger size compared to the GoPro 12. So for shooting low-light videos, the Action 4 is still the king of action cameras. Now where the Action 4 is superior in low light, the GoPro Hero 12 still has that high resolution which you can use with the standard HDR and log profile. So here's a side by side shot with the Action 4 shooting in 4K 30fps and the GoPro 12 in 5.3K HDR at 30fps. To me the Hero 12 has more punch in the colors, my face is clearer and there's also more details in the sky. But talking about punch when it comes to colors, auto white balance is something I've been playing around with. And and to me, the Action 4 just has that better true to eye white balance correction compared to the GoPro Hero 12, which constantly seem to want to lean towards the warmer side, which is strange. Now, as of a side by side comparison here of the image quality, it's hard to say which one I like more. I feel like one is better at 80% of my daily tasks, whilst the other one is better for tropical environments, which I can't seem to find here in Norway. But as of image quality, if you're watching this on a smartphone, you might not be able to spot the difference but if you're watching this on a bigger monitor, then maybe. The Action 4 also has that sharpening option from plus one to minus two, which is similar to GoPro's high, medium, and low. But the Action 4 also has four different levels of noise reduction, which at the end can make up for the high resolution if you want to have more freedom in post. So are you guys able to spot the difference in quality between these two cameras? And I'm also curious to know which device you're watching on. Is it a phone, a tablet, or a bigger monitor? Now, another interesting part with the GoPro Hero 12 is that you can actually shoot in 10-bit regardless of the log profile, the GP log profile. So you can shoot 10-bit footage using the standard video, and this goes from 4K up to 5.3K. So everything below that is gonna be 8-bit. But that means you can shoot 4K 120 10-bit footage, 4K 160, 160, 4K 60, 4K 30, and so on. And you can actually use the vibrant color profile. You can use the natural color profile, or you can use the flat color profile. So you have four options to shoot 
10 bit, which is actually pretty awesome you that you have those kind of options to choose from when it comes to shooting 10-bit footage. On the Action 4, however, you're only limited to the D-Log M color profile, which is the flat color profile if you're gonna shoot videos in 10-bit, which is, personally, I don't mind because I think the D-Log M color profile is, uh, is one of the best when it comes to color grading and putting your own style to your footage. So I really enjoy the D-Log M color profile from the Action 4, but the GP Log profile is actually pretty interesting. Now, as of how wide these cameras are, the Action 4 is still the widest at 155 degree field of view. Now, why do I say that? That's because the GoPro Hero 12 is only wider at 156 degree field of view when you turn all the stabilization off, which you can see in this example here. And I do think 99%, if not 100% of people using action camera is using it with the stabilization on, as well as getting the widest field of view. But if you still consider the GoPro Hero 12 to get the widest possible field of view without getting a 360 camera, you will have to get the max lens mod, which is another $100 to consider. Now, when it comes to color profiles and skin tones, there is always that question which looks better. This rather comes down to personal preferences though and what you like. But I wanna know which colors you prefer. Personally, I think the Action 4 looks more natural to how it actually looks in real life. And overall, the GoPro has more saturated and warmer tones to it, which I do like, but mostly when I travel. But a great feature is also the 10-bit GP low profile, which takes away some of the saturated colors. So let me know down below which of the colors you prefer. Now, as of snapping a few photos, both looks good. The max resolution is a bit higher on the GoPro though, but can you actually spot the difference? The Action 4 can take photos in 4x3, as well as 16x9 and 9x16 when rotating the camera to a vertical position. The GoPro still doesn't allow me to take 16x9 or 9x16 photos though. It still only allows me to take 4x3, which is a bummer since we have this feature when it comes to videos. So I really hope this is gonna be improved with a future firmware update so we can have the same options as we have with the aspects in video in photo as well. Now, as a mounting system, I'm a huge fan of the magnetic mounting system from DJI. It's way faster to take off and much easier to change the camera from one mount to the next. And changing it from horizontal to vertical shooting is just as fast. But new to the Hero 12, there's also a quarter inch screw on the bottom, which opens up for a more convenient way of mounting your GoPro. My favorite mounting accessories are the quick look system from Insta360, which is both secure and easy to use. I'll leave a link to those down in the description description below if you want to check them out. Now as of shooting these vertical videos with the Action 4, you just mount it in a vertical shooting position and hit record. With the Hero 12, you can now adjust the aspect in camera, which is a nice feature, either by going through the settings tab when you're in pro mode and then change to your desired aspect. Or by selecting easy mode, you can easily change the aspect by using shortcuts. Or of course, you can hold the GoPro in a vertical position, which is probably the easiest way to do it. Now there is one thing I think think GoPro is missing out on. And that is the fact that you have to be in easy mode to have this as a shortcut. And that means you lose the option to change the settings manually, which takes away the whole point of making it pro and simple. So I still think the Action 4 has the best and fastest system for shooting vertical videos when you need your camera mounted. Now, one thing I found interesting here when I was out shooting some sample videos, I now have 39% battery left on the Action 4 and 19% left on the GoPro Hero 12. But I was just about to shoot some super wide angle shots here and do a comparison between these two. And I went up to the Hyperview and it dropped down to 1% battery left, which is actually quite interesting. So I don't know what this is, if this is a bug or if it's supposed to do that, but at least now you know if you see the same thing on your GoPro Hero 12. And I've been out shooting for about two hours and we have the Action 4 at 29% and we have the GoPro 12 at 4%. And doing a quick battery comparison here in the studio with about 25 degrees Celsius with no form of airflow, the GoPro Hero 12 recorded at the highest resolution of 5.3K for about one hour and eight minutes before it overheated, which is pretty close to what GoPro claims. The Action 4, however, didn't have any issues and finished when the battery died at one hour and 45 minutes. 
Now as of screen and UI, the Action 4 has that fully functional touch screen on the front as well as the back, whilst the GoPro only has that touch function on the back. As of user experience though, the Action 4 just feels more direct than the GoPro. It's easier to navigate and the overall feel is smoother. The GoPro feels clunky and it's just not as responsive as the Action 4. And it also still gives you that occasional lags when you're trying to change some settings, which I'm personally not a fan of. But there is one thing that DJI can learn from GoPro and that is the use of shortcuts, which makes the GoPro experience a little bit better. So changing from different lenses, sharpness or color profiles is actually a bit faster on the GoPro. Now, if you buy either of these cameras, you're not gonna go wrong. Both cameras pack some amazing features, capabilities, and both have amazing image quality, but the Action 4 has that better low light image with the better sensor. So if low light video is a huge part of your style when you use an action camera, then the Action 4 might be the better buy. And if you want a little bit more flexibility when it comes to features and the adjustable settings, and if you want to be able to shoot in 10 bit for all the different profiles, well then GoPro might be the better buy. So when I was making this video, it also happened that the Max Lens Mod 2.0 arrived. So I was out testing this with my bike. I was doing some walking, I was doing some fishing and some vlogging, etc., just to see how it looked. And also to give you an impression of whether or not it's actually worth the $100. Now, as for the available features, when you use the Max Lens Mod, the aspects are 16 by nine, nine by 16 and four by three. So you're not getting that full eight by seven when using the Max Lens Mod. The max lens mod also limits you to 4K up to 60 FPS and 1080p up to 120. It's a bit strange that we don't see 2.7K at 120 FPS and I see no reason why this shouldn't be possible. A nice addition though is that we get 10 bit in the 4K resolution. We also get three different lens types, the wide, max super view and max hyper view where the last one has a 177 degree field of view. And if we're doing sports or just want the the horizon to be leveled, you can also enable horizon lock for all lens types. Now as of how wide the Max Lens Mode 2 is in real life use, here's a few comparison clips with and without the Max Lens Mode and I've also included the ultra wide on the Action 4.
Now, whether or not the Max lens mod is worth the price has to be your decision to make. As of my use, I would probably use this the most when I'm out with my motorcycle, or if I do a few vlogs and when I'm out traveling and want the high resolution as well as a wider field of view to show the surroundings of where I am. But as of first use, it's hard to say whether or not this is actually worth it. So I will give you my personal opinion about this in about a month's time or so. And if you're not in a rush, then I suggest just waiting for that video. Now, I wanna know your thoughts on these two cameras, the Action 4 or the GoPro Hero 12 based on this comparison. Which of these two do you think looks better, which sounds better, and which is your preferred camera out of these two? Now, whichever you decide to go for, don't forget to grab some accessories down in the description below. I'll link my favorite accessories that I use with my action cameras. So if you're interested in that, check them out down below. Now, also don't forget to check out Epidemic Sound, the sponsor of today's video and test it out for yourself for the 30 days free trial with my link in the description. So there you have my in-depth comparison of the GoPro and the Action 4. If you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to drop a like down below and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and let me know your thoughts on the GoPro Hero 12 down in the comments below.